In the name of the God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and blessings upon you all. The students, we have seen uh, what deadlock is and uh, a lot of things about it. Now uh, we did the prevention also, uh, how to prevent deadlock. Now we talk here about the deadlock avoidance. Okay, how we can avoid a deadlock. To avoid a deadlock, the first thing is we need some kind of a priori information. Okay, uh, so what kind of a priori information we need is we need to know what maximum number of resources a particular process needs and then we also need to know how much is being uh, uh, out of these maximum numbers how much is being assigned and how much is requested okay then this deadlock avoidance uh, what it does is it dynamically examines the resource allocation state what does that mean is it will uh, see how many is the maximum of a particular for example a process it needs as a maximum need and few uh, are allocated okay and few are being requested because uh, that's requested okay now requested plus allocated is its max now um, when it try to request and we try to allocate it okay we will try to see whether the, our system by assigning a particular resource to this process is safe or not so we need to know what is a safe state okay <clears throat> so that's what we're saying that uh, even a process request an available resource system must decide uh, whether whether this will leave, leave the system in a safe state or not so safe state is some kind of thing that uh, the all the processes there may be some sequence of processes uh, that may proceed and will actually uh, complete uh, you know all process will complete without having any deadlock okay uh, so we can have a system a safe or unsafe even the unsafe doesn't mean deadlock but there's a, a particular scenario in an unsafe state which can lead to the deadlock but if the system is safe there's no question of deadlock at all okay so let's try and see what uh, safe state means okay with an example okay now let us talk about this example so for example we got uh, here okay there is a <coughs> okay so say we got a 12 uh, tape drives and we got three processes okay this is the famous example um, and at particular time t0 we have such a state the maximum what the maximum need of the process is how many it holds okay and exactly uh, if, if, if a P0 has a maximum need of 10 and it holds 5 so it needs the request will be for the 5 similarly for P1 we have 4 this is the a priori information we need to have that how what is the maximum need of a process okay say at a particular instance now um, T2 we say that uh, or T1 uh, at a next time interval T1 now P2 will request say for example one uh, drive so it will have three drives okay so what is left out will be two so we have two will be left out okay not three now now with two left out uh, how many processes can finish if for example p2 again comes it may get even the both the two that means we'll get a five because it, if it is three uh, current hole so it needs how many it needs it needs six but we have only two left this guy needs five we have only two left so this process can come in and finish uh, it because it needs two so it can come in and get the two for example it will finish and it will release four so with the four in hand now neither p0 nor p2 can finish so this state uh, that if we uh, have the p2 asking for one after that it, it will go in a in an unsafe state so this is no more a safe state so that's what we say that when we are trying to allocate the resource over here uh, we will not we're not gonna uh, allocate this because this can lead us to the unsafe state so before we assign a resource to the process we simply see whether our uh, state will be in a safe state or not in this case if we assign one a tape drive to the p2 definitely our state will not be our system will not be in a safe state so better not to allocate this so that's what we do and a dy dynamically when a process x uh, you know a requested resource we will deny it right now here we're gonna deny it because we understand 
that we uh, actually don't have a safe state. Now, uh, instead, what we do is if, say, for example, P1 or because P1 needs the 2 and we have 3 tape drives, for example, here and P0 needs 5, okay? So if we give, for example, uh, out of this 2 to the P1, okay, and th this will need 7, for example, here and we have 5 here. So, and 3 is there. So, if we assign the two drives in a future to the P1, for example, it will finish it up and it will release the 4. Okay? So, it will release the 4. Total we will have is 4 plus 1 because uh, if we give 2 to it, okay, and uh, uh, only 1 will be left and when it is done, P1 done, it will release. So, total we will have a 5. So, with 5 in a hand, we can assign those five to the P0 because P0 has uh, five requisite. We can assign those five uh, to the P0, okay? And P0 can uh, then finish, okay? And it will release the 10, okay? Uh, uh, whatever it has, uh, because it, it will get the, all the 10. When it is finished, it release 10, and then this guy P2 can finish, okay? So we can have a safe state. So therefore, uh, if we are giving, uh, say for example here to the P1, these two drives, we say, okay, we can give it because our system can be in a safe state, okay? But it's not necessary that in safe state we may not have a deadlock. Say for example, we said, okay, it's a, uh, it's a two, uh, we give a two to this guy, so it release the four, if, mm, uh, because it needs seven, if, if, it, if it gives all the four to the P2, for example, okay, it will still need a three, Okay, and uh, P0 needs a 5 and we don't have any uh, drive left. Uh, we may have only uh, 5 left, okay. We may have, because in the beginning, if uh, we give 2 to this, okay, only 1 is left, okay. And uh, now, um, it will release the 4, so 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 is left out. And if we give, now we say, that, okay, this is our safe state because we see the P0 can finish with these five in a hand. But if it doesn't give to the P0, it gives these five or even two to this uh, P2. If it gets two more, so it will need the five. But here, what's left out is three only. So neither the P0 nor P2 can finish. That's why we say that if we are in an unsafe state, okay, uh, there may be deadlock or there may not be deadlock, okay? right now um, if there is a sequence okay if there is a sequence uh, of uh, we, we, we need if we have a sequence that we can finish right so then we can say that okay uh, we are gonna have a safe state so this we chuck uh, on the runtime okay we dynamically chuck when we, our process is requesting a resource we try to see uh, if there will be a safe state or not. Okay, simple as it is. Now we may have we have actually two algorithms uh, to uh, for deadlock avoidance. One is that if we have only one instance per resource. Okay, if you have only one instance per resource, and if you have multiple instances per resource. Say for example, we got a resource called a printer, and we have ten printers. Okay, and we have drives. We got five drives, and so on. But if we have uh, a resource is that is only single instance. So we have one printer, one drive, and one other things. Single, single resource. Okay. Then we can apply what's called as a resource allocation algor graph algorithm, because uh, resource allocation graph is best used for detecting the cycle if we have a single resource, right? So if the cycle is there, if we try to see the request and there's a cycle, we simply say this request can't be met. Okay. But if we have multiple resources, uh, multiple instances per resources, then we're going to have the banker's algorithm. Okay. Well, let's try to discuss the our resource allocation graph algorithm. Okay. So this algo. Now, in this resource allocation graph, we have already seen this allocation graph. We only have uh, little modifications here where we have the claim edge also there right we know the request edge and we know the uh, no, assignment edge that also we have the processes and resources uh, for example this is a resource and instance is shown by the dot okay if we have a single resource there may be a, a single dot okay and if this is a process say p0 
if we have an edge from process to the resource like this which is saying here process to the resource okay that's the request edge so this is process is requesting this r1 for example okay but if we have say for example another process p1 and this is being allocated to this so we have a directed edge from the resource to the process so if we have an edge from resource to process that is the assignment edge okay now we have another edge here for example this is the resource r2 and we are saying in a future that p0 may request the r2 okay that is going to be shown by the claim edge from the process to the resource that is uh, like the request edge okay that in a future the process may request the resource 2 as well this time around it's not requesting this time around it's requesting r1 but in the future because we need to have a priori knowledge that's what uh, we said that we need to know what processes uh, will request this time and what they will request in the future and total how many they want how many resources they want that, that kind of knowledge we need to have now if we say this time it's not but in future it may so it's kind of a, re a request edge but we show it using the dash it line okay this is called the claim edge so by this we understand that, that in future in some point in time the p0 may request also the r2 does it make sense now later when we actually uh, request it so at uh, th this moment in time say for example now it's p0 is requesting uh, the r2 then we convert this to the request edge simply by having a uh, you know, solid line okay okay then how will uh, actually the uh, resource allocation graph work? So we actually, uh, this is a kind of a cycle detection algorithm. Because we know if there is a cycle, uh, that may lead to the deadlock. So this is what we actually chuck. Let us try to see this thing with an example. Now also, if uh, it is assigned uh, to the P0, now say for example, R2 is assigned to the P0, right? Then uh, this edge will be like this because it's assigned now for example if after some time P0 releases R2 it will go back to the claim edge okay so we move back and forth uh, between the these edges okay uh, from claim edge to the request edge then uh, we may have, if it's allocated so we got the assignment edge okay which is from R2 to the P0 and when it is done uh, we have again back it back to it at the claim edge okay now if we see an example here now look at this example uh, the process p1 and the process p2 so this is a potential request so this is a claim edge okay because we need to have an a priori knowledge this is what we're talking about we need to have an a priori knowledge in the beginning that we need know that p1 may request in future the a as well as b and process p2 also may request uh, a and b in a future but we don't know uh, right now uh, which is being requested or not okay say now we may have scenarios so we can't say that we have a deadlock right now okay so we have a scenario when a particular process requests and we try to see if by that request will there be a cycle or not if there is a cycle we disallow that request if so we deny that request or like that but if it doesn't have a cycle so we carry on with the request now let's check the scenario that if say for example p1 now requests resource a so we'll convert this edge this is the process p1 and this is resource a and this is resource b okay this is resource a resource b now we have to convert this to the request edge from process to the resource right so it's requesting it. Rest of the guys will remain the diagram will remain the same. So process P2, this is the claim edge, this is the claim edge, this is the claim edge. Okay. And we when this request comes, uh, the system sees whether there's cycle or not, but there is no cycle at all. So we can assign it, there is no problem. So we go forward and assign it. So we say, okay, man, you can be assigned. This resource A can be assigned to the process. That is, if we have a resource to the process and edge, directed edge, that's gonna be the uh, allocation edge so we allocate it okay no problem in allocation or server uh, rest of the guys are like same okay uh, their claim edges only resource B okay claim edge claim edge now if for example uh, we have another request 
from this time from the p2 the process second is requesting this uh, resource b so we convert this to the request stage so this is the p0 this is p1 this is the resource a this is resource b resource a is allocated and this guy is requesting it now so we convert to the request stage and rest of the guys are clay matches now here when we check the system we found there is a cycle okay if for example we assign this say we assign this to this now what will happen uh, in future p0 will now request b okay and p1 may also request if we allocate it, p1 may request a okay so p0 is holding the a and requesting b and p1 is holding the b and requesting a so there will be a perfect deadlock there's a hold and wait if they are non preemptive we need to have these resources non preemptive resources and also there is a cycle so all have under condition satisfied for the deadlock to happen so all the four are, are, are actually here so we say oh man we can't do this okay we can't do this because this can lead to in future this can lead to the uh, the deadlock so we don't we deny this request okay so we say get it back to the claim edge so p1 is waiting so it gotta wait we can't assign it the b okay so in the future p0 may finish a or may also request now the b uh, simultaneously or may release the a and get the b and are done so when p0 is done okay this will again be the then the claim edge okay uh, and now resource a is free if uh, for p1 now this request is now the legitimate because there is no cycle now okay because uh, nobody is allocated on this side now p1 can be assigned the b okay so this is how we avoid the deadlock right now so deadlock avoidance and uh, the difference between the avoidance and prevention is that in prevention we do something uh, before hand so that deadlock may not occur but in prevention we wait at the runtime we wait we do it dynamically we just see when the request is being made okay this is should we grant the request or not depending upon um, the safe state or not okay in this case if we have a single resource we can do it by the resource allocation graph method and wherein we chuck whether there is a cycle or not okay if there is a cycle found we simply deny that request and we don't actually we make that process to wait does it make sense or not now what if if we have the multiple instances per resource if for example b here b does not have one instance it may have uh, more instances okay now if uh, the p0 if, if p1 uh, is requesting uh, the b it may take one instance for example but it still there is a cycle but it still uh, is not enough for the deadlock because we have multiple resources right so for these guys we have what's called as the bankers algo okay and this thing will be our next thing till then maslama